What would you say to someone then who wants to develop their public speaking skills but isn't sure where to start? I would say what I said to me, which was that when I first started reading, giving readings, I was so scared. I was so nervous. You know, and it's weird because I'd given lectures to 130 students um, over previous years and that hadn't phased me at all. But somehow reading my own creative writing was much more daunting. And I've seen this with, I've taught drama students where they're used to giving performances uh, all the time. And yet when it comes to reading their own poetry, they they go really quiet and can't cope with it. So it, it, it can be, but it can be daunting. And all I can say is that people tend to be very patient and that yes, the first two or three readings can be very, very hard. But once you've done it a couple of times, it becomes uh, it becomes just a huge pleasure. So it's just a matter of kind of getting used to it and practice. And if you have a, I mean, I, I'm, I have, I grew up with stammer. So I find some aspects of it quite difficult. But actually, the more I do it, because it's my writing. When I get into the writing itself, the stammer almost goes because uh, I kind of, uh, I know it so well. I don't, I don't know why it is even, but it, it just sort of flows much, much more. But if you have, you know, the, the, the ways and means, and if you have, for example, a quiet voice, always use a mic uh, because they're really useful. And, you know, I think... People are people are very patient. I think always. I, I suppose if I was going to say the one thing that I think the one the one thing that people do lose patience with is anyone who goes over time, and never ever 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 times a thousand talk for more than your allotted time in any event. Because uh, and I'm speaking here as an academic, and academics are terrible at this. I've been to talks um, at conferences where academics have uh, were given 20 minutes and then talked all the way through lunch. And people were so angry. My stomach was angry. So it's kind of, I think, as long as, as long as you don't do that, which is the cardinal sin, then I think people are, people are really kind. And the more you do it, the more you'll get used to it. And in the end, I just love it. So I'm speaking as someone who, who found it really hard to start with, it is now one of the great pleasures of life, I think, to connect with an audience in that way. I remember when I was a kid, I was one of those who would get up and read an assembly and it was usually a poem. So obviously I enjoyed that as a poet. And I always used to feel like really nervous physically beforehand, like my stomach could be going around and I'd be a bit jittery. And I remember standing up waiting to go on stage and I just thought to myself, why do I feel anxious when I want to do this? And it kind of created a shift in my mind because the physiological responses of anxiety and excitement are the same. And so if you are consciously aware of the fact you want to do something and you're looking forward to doing it, but you're feeling anxious because it's new, you can kind of shift your perspective Mm. and it takes a little bit of time and it's not something that is easy to explain how to do, but it does work and it made a massive difference to me. And the other thing that made a difference to me was when we did the launch of our anthology Restless Minds in 2014, I wanted to present it, but I didn't want to speak because I wanted to go look how awesome everyone else is, but then kind of shrink into the background. And everyone from the lecturers to my classmates was like you've got to read you've got to read you've got to read and I eventually agreed and the only criticism someone gave me was that I ran off the stage too quickly after I'd finished my poem so I couldn't get the round of applause mm. I remember I remember Christina I remember you. you reading and I remember you presenting really well it was fantastic Thank you. yeah and and I mean that's really interesting isn't it the, the relationship between um, anxiety and excitement I think that's right I mean the advantage you have is as as a writer giving a reading giving a performance is that uh, is it there's is it physically there's I mean yeah you sometimes see people shaking or trembling but that's a tiny thing all you're doing is reading out and whereas you know I used to I used to do concerts. Um, I wrote wrote music and used to give 
the odd concert as a as a pianist. And with piano, if you're nervous, it just wrecks it because your leg is shaking, so you can't do the pedal, and your hands are shaking, so you can't play the keys properly. Where you don't have that problem <laughs> as a as a as a uh, as a writer because you just got a book and you're just reading from a book. So in a way, it's 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 one of the easiest forms of performance. And I would I would I mean the, the other thing I would say is that is that you know no one ever minds whether you you don't have, you know you talk about learning stories the storytelling in the first year, which is that's so hard because most people, you know, most poets and novelists, they read just from a book and there's nothing wrong with that, you know, having a print in front of you. And that helps, I think. I have that prompt. I can't learn, I can't learn anything. Uh, I forget every sentence after I've written it. So. Oh yeah, same. I um, remember actually one of our lecturers said even if he's memorized a poem, he likes to have the book in his hand because it kind of adds to the performance to have it there. And it's probably free marketing as well. Let's be serious. Absolutely. Yeah. 